Would you believe me if I told you you could turn this pillow into this bag? If you know me, then hello and welcome back. If you don't know me, then welcome to Steph. I am Steph, your guide to all things wonderful. Here on this channel, we do lots of fun stuff involving sewing. This project is something that I've had in mind for a while, ever since a wave of creativity just like hit me in the face one day when I was picking through the reject pile of the Ikea shop. Story time. Way back in September, I dived back into vlogging a little bit. And during that vlog, I had a trip to Ikea where I mentioned that I had some ideas about some creative projects. The biggest achievement of the day though, was that I kept seeing things I wanted to buy, but I resisted and everyone knows that's how you win the Ikea game. I'm calling Steph one point Ikea zero. I also had some ideas about things to make using stuff from the reject pile, which is my favorite part of the shop. Then in the October vlog, we visited Ikea again, and I picked up this here pillow case to transform into a bag. And now it's November, and I'm actually getting around to doing the thing that I've had my mind set on for several months. A quick note on terminology, because the internet tells me that English has lots of different dialects for whatever people call this here pouch. I would call this a cushion cover, whereas I think in the US, you call that kind of thing a pillow. Where I live, a pillow is something for your head that you sleep on, whereas a cushion is like a decorative item that either lives on the couch or the bed. I don't love having lots of cushions around. I think they're kind of dumb, but I do love a good cushion cover. So this is, this is an opportunity for me to actually pick up some things that I would want around in my life, but not necessarily in the form of a cushion slash pillow. I have two, by the way. I have this one, which is like cream with like yellow thread, and I have this one, which has some sort of fruit on it. So to get started, I'm gonna run you through all the bits that I'm using for this project. The first item I'm using is this cushion cover from Ikea called Gould Flu, which was a floor stock item. And I'm also using the Parkselot, which was on special. They both have a zipper along the top, which is very important for this project. I'm using some one and a half inch strap stuff that I bought from Spotlight, as well as this pom-pom stuff that I had in my stash, also from Spotlight. And I'm going to use some pink thread to attach the pom-poms just to the pink one with some top stitching so it matches. It would be possible just to like add straps to this and have the zipper be the top opening and call it a day and voila, you have yourself a bag. But I find that uh, when you have some sort of canvas bag or shopping bag that doesn't have like a gusset corner, it's like things get lost really easily and it doesn't have enough shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is alter the shape of the bag, the lower half of the bag itself. And this is inspired by a bag that I have had for many, many, many years. This is from a cafe in Denmark where I live called Le Cabra. If you're ever in Aarhus, I recommend to go there. This was the first time I had received a canvas bag that had a little gusset detail. You can see at the bottom corner here. You can see if you turn this inside out, taken what would have been just sort of like a square slash rectangular shape and then by simply folding the corner at a 45 degree angle and stitching it, you end up with a lovely bag shape. So what I'm gonna do is turn this inside out. I'm going to just fold it out like this and let it sort of find a natural base. I'm gonna line up the, line up the um, bottom seam with the side seam. And then I'm gonna measure, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna guesstimate it. So I'm just gonna fold that out. Maybe I'm gonna go for seven inches. So you can see that that's like a 45 degree angle from the corner. I'm just gonna pin that and then see what it looks like when I turn it out. So you can see that now the bag has a little bit of shape. And I think that that's probably gonna be a good sort of proportion for the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin those and stitch them. I used my sewing ruler to mark a stitching line and then I laid both corners on top of each other to double check that they were in the same spot and gonna be the same length. I'm just using white thread and a normal stitch for the insides. I'm gonna use the pink thread for putting pom-poms on. My machine is literally dusty because I have not used it in that long and I cannot tell you how happy I am to be pretty much done with uni 
and back at the sewing machine. <laughs> things are stitched I may or may not just tuck them up or down I'm not sure I'll uh, press it later and see how I go but let's just turn it out the right way and see what we're working with hey 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 I think that's pretty good cool so that's like the basic shape of the bag So shape is done, tick, that's step number one. So the other excellent thing about this LeCabra bag is that inside there is a little pouch that is very handy because as you would know, if you're carrying around this sort of tote bag, things get lost in there very easily. So I'm gonna use some of these handkerchiefs that were a gift from my mother-in-law. Thank you, thank you very much, Michelle. I, I don't use handkerchiefs personally, and I have been thinking about a way to use these things that are an appropriate way to honor them because they are Liberty fabrics. And if you're a sewing person, then you know how lovely and beautiful Liberty fabrics are. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing them justice, but at least, at least I'll be using it rather than not using it. So let's open this up. So I feel like this color goes nicely with this uh, pillowcase. So mind where the opening is. So it's just beautiful fabric. Look at that. It's stunning. And conveniently, the edges have already been finished. Very nice. I messed around with the shape of the pouch for a while and just frankly couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out the best way to make this little pouch doodad and I'll be right back. I just don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do with myself. All right, I'm gonna move on to something else because I can't figure this out right now. Bye. Oh, I'm just gonna whiz through and do the same gossip thing on this pillowcase as I did on this one. And I'll be right back. Can you see my face? Both of the gussety bits are done on both bags and now I'm going to figure out straps. So I can't remember exactly how much of this I bought. One, two, three. I bought three meters of this. I didn't buy three meters. I wish I had bought three meters. I bought, I bought 2.4 meters. So that means that each one is about 60 centimeters long. Um, maybe. Okay. I'm just gonna go for it. I can always change them later if I want to. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna cut this into four and then we'll go from there. Such a satisfying sound. I'm gonna concentrate on the yellow bag because I don't know, I feel like, I feel like this is the tester and then the pink one can be where I have a play with the pom-poms. So to figure out the spacing on the straps, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold this in half and then fold it in quarters. And I think I want the straps to line up at about this mark. So like midway point of the, uh, at the quarter mark, is what I'm trying to say. So there and there. And then I'm, I'm just gonna, because I, because I don't have a lot of length here, I'm literally gonna fold it once and I'm gonna stitch along there. It's gonna be like a very, very, very short fold. Um, I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough to hold everything that I needed to hold. You know what, I, I'm gonna put the strap on the inside of that marking that I made. Can you see that? So this is the quarter marking that I made on the top edge. And I'm just gonna put it 
line up the outer edge of the strap with the marking and then have the bulk of it on the inside. I think that that's probably, that's probably a good spot to get a good shape as well as have enough to get the bag over your shoulder. I foolishly didn't record any b-roll of this from my view but all I did was go around in a very long skinny rectangle on this lower part of the strap which was folded over ever so slightly because I wanted to maintain the length. Then to give it some extra strength, I stitched it along where that extra bit of fabric is up near the zipper. So I just folded back the zipper and did a line or two back along that extra fabric just to give it another point of reinforcement to stop it gaping. And once this thread finally cuts, I'll show you what it looks like. Hello, it is the next day. I, uh, I got tired last night and I still couldn't figure out this little pouch, so I just decided to call it and pick it up today. So to recap, here we are with the uh, bag with the yellow stitching on it. I put on the straps. I did sort of like a little rectangle around this part and then I also attached it right up near the, right up near the zipper. I just held the zipper away so I could attach it at this top part here because otherwise it was gonna like gape a little bit and I just thought it would pull in a weird spot. So that just makes it extra secure. And I need to trim all these threads, but the other thing that I sort of figured out is the pouch situation. I'm hoping that I'm gonna make another coffee and figure it out because I'd really like to get this sorted today and then I guess use it later or I'm thinking that this might be a uh, Christmas present idea for maybe a family member or a friend. I think that this is a cool thing to do if you wanted to like go to Ikea, rummage through the reject pile cushion covers and make a bag for a really affordable price. Plus a living crisis is a real thing. I don't know how to make this pouch. I really don't. I really don't and I really want to figure it out. But at first I need a coffee and I think I need my medication. I haven't taken my medication yet. Let's do that, shall we? One tiny pill. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna make a coffee and then I'll meet you back here and we're gonna figure out this pouch together. and now I'm gonna try and figure out how to do this pouch. I really feel like I'm overthinking it and that's just classic me. So um, this is my phone, I got a new phone. It's massive, it's way bigger than I was expecting, but it's a massive upgrade. Anyway, I think I'm gonna, I can't even see, I don't have my glasses on. But basically I want it to be able to fit my phone comfortably, maybe my keys. And when the phone is in the pouch, I don't want it to be like sticking too far out of the top. <sighs> so for reference, the La Cabra one is kind of like this big. And my phone fits kind of kind of in there. It um it's, it's kind of too tall though, but I feel like this is kind of the same size. Same size pouch to begin with. Also, this fabric is quite thin. Maybe I need to make it double. Maybe I do that. You know what? That's actually not a bad idea because then if, if all of these are, then there's kind of like a pocket there and a pocket there and a pocket there. Hey, that's a great idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna stitch that together. 
I don't know if this is gonna work the way that I think it's gonna work. Let's just give it a go and see what happens. Here I am just marking the middle of this already folded bit to give myself a stitching line and I'm gonna stitch from the bottom up to where that fold ends. Test if this actually works. I always struggle with this sort of stuff. Create what I wanted to create. Hey, yes, it works. Okay, great. Okay, 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 okay. I'm also gonna stitch along this edge and then flip it out and attach it, and then it'll be done. Hooray! As I said, I'm stitching the raw edges closed all the way to the top. I didn't need to finish the edges of this pouch because it was already, the handkerchief already came that way. But if you need to finish edges, then maybe consider how you need to do that. I, I don't have any advice for you right now. I'm really tired and I, 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 yeah, I need to get this video out. Oh my God, amazing. Look at that. Good. Hey. Well, that turned out a little better than I expected. I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting that to take more, way more brain power. I think it's amazing what you can do with some coffee and some dexamphetamine. All right, the last step is going to be to attach the pouch into the inside of the bag. I tend to have a front and back to the bags that I carry, even if there's no discernible front or back. Um, don't ask me why, it's just, it's just how my brain is, okay? So for this bag, I'm going to consider the front to be when the zipper is all the way to this end because when I'm opening, when I'm carrying it like this, it means I can have some of this end closed but still get in from this end. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to at least someone out there. Comment if it makes sense to you, please. Help me feel less alone in my weirdness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my pouch and I'm gonna put it inside here. I'm going to attach it not to the actual outside of the cushion, but I'm gonna add it on this extra bit of seam here underneath the zipper because then that way there'll be no extra stitching that you'll see from the front. Hoping that that will also be low enough so that when my phone is in the pouch, there'll be still enough room to zip off the bag if I need to. I, I just had a mini heart attack because I thought that I had put this on the wrong way around, which I have, by the way, I have. The pouch is actually under here, but thankfully, because of the way I made it, I can just turn it out the other way. And it, and it still, and it still functions. <laughs> Thank fuck for that. So there we go. There's a bag. How about it? With a little pouch. Your phone. <laughs> I am so stoked with myself. Alrighty, I've tidied everything up and the pouch is in. And there is one more feature I'm going to add, and that is a little key chain loop emoji. I, you may have seen my video where I made this uh, here water bottle holder. If you haven't, you can go catch up on that. Um, I, I switched out the uh, attachment I was using to connect the water bottle holder to the strap and I got these little um, clips, these little two-way carabiner clips from Amazon for like $10. I will link them below. But what happened is it made the strap kind of too long. So I tied it in a knot the other day when I went for a walk. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just shorten this whole strap by however long that is. How long is that between those two things? It's gonna be eight, eight inches. What I'm gonna do is just undo one of these loops and I'm gonna cut off the inches. 
and I'll fix that up later. And then I'm going to take this loop, I'm just gonna stitch it in and then I'm gonna attach one of those clips as well on the inside so that, so that I can uh, hook my keys onto something. So there's the loop, and there's, there's the clip, and I think this is ready to go. I have to say I'm really happy with myself right now because this is turning out like better than I imagined. I'm really, really, really happy with myself. And now I'm going to quickly whip through making the pink one and I'll meet you guys back to show you the final result. Oh hi, I'm still here. I figured I would talk you through how I did the pink one. I started with the pouch. I'd already done the shape, remember? I'd already done the gussety bits. So I started with the pouch because I wanted to get that in so the straps weren't in the way. I did the thing where I folded it up almost halfway, stitched along the middle, and then stitched along the raw edges and folded it out the right way, ready to attach to the actual bag itself. Unlike the other bag, I did attach this pouch directly to the outside fabric because I knew that I was going to cover everything up with the pom-poms. I used a zigzag stitch as you can see here. When I attached the straps, I left the edges raw as well. I didn't bother with folding under the end of the strap because everything was going to be covered with these beautiful pom-poms. I just had to make sure that the end of the strap aligned with where I'd attached the pouch and then everything would be covered with pom-poms. And same as with the other bag, I reinforced the strap with more stitching up near the zipper. And then I marked out where the pom-poms needed to go. I just marked out a line that I would follow along while I was stitching the pom-poms down. Using the pink thread, I did two lines of stitching, just straight stitching to make sure that that trim would lay really nice and flat on the back once it was all done. To say that I'm stoked with this project would be an understatement. This turned out exactly the way that I had in my head and I am so happy. I can fit so much stuff in this bag. I can fit my towel, my cozy, my drink bottle, I can fit all the things you might need for the beach. And the pouch is very handy for the phone, the little key loopy doodad. Oh, I forgot to mention where I got those. I will link them below so that you guys can get the same ones if you want to try this out. This is what the yellow one looked like and then I also made the pink one which I think I'm probably going to keep for myself because the pom-poms just make me really 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 happy. I have already used this twice as an overnight bag and it works so well because it's huge and just look at it it's so cute if you're going to make this project please let me know I would love to see how it turns out if you have ideas if you have suggestions for things that you want me to make please write them below and in the meantime, remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Thank you so much for watching.